Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week we announced the nominees for this year's Mayhemies. We talk about 20 years of Monday Night Raw, and we all remember what it was like to be full of childlike wonder. This week's Wrestling Mayhem show. Stick around. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Chachi Plays for Kids. Find out how you can participate and donate. ChachiPlays.com. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 352. It is that time where we uh, get ready. This is the precursor of, of the Dressy Up Night. Uh, it's the introduction of the Mayhemies. We're going to get into that in the second half here on the Mayhem Show. I am Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, ready to get uh, a Mayhemy and stuff. Uh, regaling us with his uh, 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 thoughts on the old world in the, in the Mayhem Gold as we were preparing here is Papa Lunchbox, back almost from the dead last week. That's correct. Almost from the very dead. Uh, I could only do half a show because of that. But you made up your time by doing Awesome Cast tonight. That's true. Go watch the Awesome Cast and then go watch Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. Oh, where do you get introduced to this character right, and while. everything that he is about? He will tell you about how the inside of your lungs look uh, just by touching you on the shoulder and uh, feeling the feel of the cloth on his webbed feet. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> also from San Antonio, wow. Texas, is the Wrestle Fan. He wasn't in Houston. I wasn't in Houston because it's a long ass drive away. And also, it would be difficult with uh, my web feet that apparently is uh, <laughs> uh, a, a, a feature of normal human beings. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited. I got uh, educated <coughs> and recanted of old tale. Uh, and I'm excited because it's Mayhemi's time. It's coming up, folks, and it's going to get. Dirty. And also joining us from the great wild wet Johnstown PA is Bobby F. J. Town. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. The wild wet might be freezing here in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to freezing rain tonight. A little um, bit. A little bit. Yeah, uh, and um I'd like to throw a lunchbox a turnip and just see what would happen. <laughs> Uh, I believe I would take the turnip and I would uh, gnaw on it with the extra set of teeth that I keep uh, buried deep into my rib cage. I would not be able to taste it or enjoy the turnip, but I thank you all the same, uh, Bobby, my dear dear boy child. <laughs> also welcome, with sir. us on the couch, the man mired in helping kids right now from ChachiPlays.com. Chachi. Uh, first off, why am I the last one? I don't know. That's just the way the switch is tonight. I, and I forgot to do a title for you. So uh, yeah. Number two. Yes. Here's a fun fact for you, the listeners. Children who are introduced and perform or partake in the arts programs are less likely to be asshats as they grow up. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. Uh, studies have shown that kids who participate in, in the arts overall behave better than kids who do not. Mm. So go over to uh, ChachiPlays.com, click that donate button, and help us uh, prevent another generation of asshats. To to uh, to support Chachi's claims, I never uh, participated in art. See, there you go. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Who participated in art here, Chachi? Did you participate I in art? Oh. I, I took art class all four years. You took art class. That was optional. Yeah. Oh, there you go. How about LB? LB, you're an artist. You went to the art institute. That's true. I have a, I have a degree uh, and uh, crippling debt to prove it. Ah, uh, yes, and I'm in the same boat. How about you, Bobby? I was in uh, marching band and percussion, and uh, don't be a dick, kids. Uh, do some arts. See? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Music counts. Music See? counts. And I was in plays and musicals and all that stuff. Oh, I My beard fell off at yeah, Santa Claus one year. I did in play. some music. Yeah, there you go. There you go. See? I played the trombone. Help us mold the next generation of kids to not be asshats. 
There you go. Go over to ChachiPlays.com and donate, that's please. That's the unofficial slogan of ChachiPlays.com. <laughs> oh, this is this is the only place where I will use that. that <laughs> for that the phrase. audience, exactly. The big banner up says, don't be an asset. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that up at the Toon Museum. It'll be fantastic. Yeah. Can we also um, use that for when we talk about The Rock? Yes. Yeah, there uh, you go. There you go. Um, and... and, 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 and Hey, WrestlingMayhemShow.com is where you can go check out stuff, articles, and stuff that we're going to get into tonight uh, with the Mayhemies. Uh, we got bloggy blogs from us, uh, for occasionally from LB, from uh, uh, WrestleFan. I might write something here in the next couple of days. I've been itching. Sorg is going to write for us. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I know, I know. Uh, and you can also find out the, everything about the show, including finding us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher, Spreaker, whatever that is, Put Pl- Pl- TV, Roku, YouTube, uh, Blip TV apps on your Roku, and I, I think soon on your Xbox as well. Um, and uh, are we on Downcast, Papa Lunchbox? Absolutely, we're on Downcast. Thank you, thank you. Because even he's been experiencing. We talked about that a little bit on Awesome Cast uh, okay. earlier tonight. Um, also, drop us a line to that address at Good Times. Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Uh, you can also drop us a line to four one two two zero six WMS zero. You can also buy the app. Uh, it's the uh, quick access, including all that gold stuff, including more of that wonderful voice that Papa Lunchbox was doing while we we're trying to fix Bobby's computer. Uh, oh, my. I learned so much about the old country, which is apparently just the country. Yes, um, just the country. Just the country. Uh, and, and, and a wonderful interaction with, with uh, Donald Trump. Uh, we learned about, but you're gonna have to go buy the app dollar ninety nine on iOS and the Amazon App Store for Android devices, uh, and, and also works on your iPad of any size and shape. Uh, so please do that. It supports this show uh, and shows that that you that you believe in the mayhem, right there. So please go check that. All kinds of fun stuff on there, including access to all all the Facebook and the Twitter and the and the and, and calling us and everything with one button access, so you can drunk dial us. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, hey, it's the show. We're getting the show going the only way we know how. Uh, 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 let's get right into some fan mail. Who's got it first? I got one. joshy has got one. Go and hit it. WMS. Ow. Now I'm not going to tell you the the schematics on how the Rock <coughs> raised our brains with this horrible singing dick. I have something to say. Since I'm not on the show, I have to sit here and type my choices for moment of the year. And just like there's one choice for guest host of the year, there's one moment of 2012 that needs to be addressed. Virgil. He also met, well, you missed, he also mentioned hashtag Riz2013. Yeah, I don't care about that. <laughs> Why should you vote for the R- Virgil rant? Because fuck Virgil! Fuck him in his fucking ass. Hey, what's the score? You know what the score is? It's fuck you. That's what the score is. I'll take my phone and kick you in the gambling dick. If you vote for anything but Virgil, you will let Virgil win. We don't want Virgil to win, do we? Do we? Wrestler porn stars. Virgil wins. Marth. Virgil wins. Anything fucking else but Virgil. Virgil will fucking win. Holy shit. A vote for Virgil is a vote for fuck you, Virgil. Until next time, fuck the score, Riz. Yeah, fuck the score. There you go. Here's yeah. A, here's a quick one here from Ciro 2K. He says, hey, guys, Ciro here. Hi, Ciro. Just felt like stomping wrestling yeah. fan tonight. Which promotion is responsible for Gavin Loudspeaker, a.k.a. Loud and Noxious? Go ahead, wrestle fan. The correct answer to that would be Kaiju Big Battle. Not to only mention that, I'll also say that the transformation from Loud and Noxious to Gavin Loudspeaker happened on an episode of the Chikara podcast, A Go-Go, which was Loud and Noxious along with Dasher Hatfield, where the freight elevator that is signature to that show uh, crashed and had an accident, transforming uh, Gavin Loudspeaker, or I'm sorry, transforming Loud and Noxious into Gavin Loudspeaker and allowing Dasher Hatfield to be Dasher Hatfield year-round because he used to be creator wrestler and he could only be a certain character for a year. So because of the accident, he was allowed to be Dasher Hatfield forever. <laughs> Mr. Baseball. <laughs> uh, the revolution Suck says... It, zero. He says, too much info, you lose. Sounds like Wikipedia. He should have just, like uh, yeah. just stepped Fuck back you. and dropped the mic after that one because he hit it. And that was no Wikipedia right there. 
No Wikipedia. Just saying, that was the that was the uh, I am the biggest fan of Galvin loudspeaker there ever is. <laughs> honestly, honestly, fan of who, is, who isn't the biggest fan of Gavin Loudspeaker? I'm a fan. I am a fan. I I, I did geek out a little bit when I got to see him uh, in person. Um, I think I spoke to him for a moment at the uh, fan club that one year. Uh, he was like, oh, I remember this guy. It's the guy from Kaiju Big Battle. He was on like warnings in a really crappy time slot on G4 for a while. And they showed G.I. Joe around his stuff. I, it was weird. Um, anyways. <laughs> uh, and with that, who's up next? Uh, we got, uh, uh, you know what? We yeah. got, we got a couple foreign ones here. Uh, uh Russell fan, do you want to hit that? I'll take that one. We have one from the, uh, our good friend El Gran Azul. Okay. Hola amigos, hey. es mi, es mi, es el gran azul, ole! No one's gonna do it, okay, great. Ole! Uh, ol- Thank ole. you! Ole! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> tu nuevo, campeone del mundo, Alberto del Rio! There we go. Uh, El Generico, <laughs> numero uno luchador in Mexico. And doble, doble, e. Ole, 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 ole. <laughs> and wait, were you trying to play the PPC? <laughs> okay. I heard uh, Tetris. Oh, was that uh, going? Oh, oh well, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, and by the way, I can sing better than El Rock. He makes my dog bark in fear and terror. Ole! And that's it. And that's it. All right, what we got? LB, I think you got the next one. Totes. Totes. And I'm going to get your audio. <clears throat> hey! 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 What's up, Mayhem Crew? It's me! It's me! It's Big BPC! 12 days of Christmas was great. So didn't get to watch Monday Night Raw yet. Ugh, Rob Stone Cold is there at the 20th anniversary, bro. I did see the DNA pay-per-view. Ugh, good thing or bad thing. Not sure it was alright pay-per-view. Tag champs Chavo and Hernandez retained against Morgan and the Orkin. I enjoyed both teams, so this was okay. I miss machine guns and beer. Monday. Beer. Money. They had classic Bedes tech matches fact. Anderson. Anderson versus Mojo with good ace and aids into distracting John helping Anderson get the win. Uh, this was good match. I like both so you know whatever. Joe was gonna kill you. Shakes fit that aces and aids. Ken King versus Christian York was also a good match. I have seen both before and I think these two are fantastic additions to X Division. Christian York ended up winning, which the match and uh, but immediately have a match against Rob Van Dam. Uh, both RVD and Christian York had good match and respect to both. People can hate on Rob all he wants for smoking the green, but nobody gets higher than RVD. It's a word to somebody's mother. Joseph Park, you know, a beast, not his brother. This whole deal needs to stop soon. Damn this fucking guy. And Devon, really fucking Devon. Ah, worst match. Ah. Uh, Devon is amazing TV champ for me to poop on. If why, Joseph Park is from Chicago, Illinois, and his horrible theme music. Facts! Knockouts! Gauntlet match! Gail vs. Tis Marker, then Gail vs. OTP, then Gail vs. Mick James, then Gail vs. Velvet Sky, and Velvet Sky is now the number one contender. Fact. This is better than anything the Divas did all last year in the ring that is. Terra Terrell is a terrible ref, but the case is easy on the eyes. Drew McIntyre was tapping that, but now he is in band, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Daniels Kaz versus the Cowboy James Storm. I like everyone involved in this match. Seeing Daniels get win over Styles last month and now Storm this month. It has been good times for the former World Tag Team World Champs. Apparently, fact 
This is the first time Daniels vs. Storm one on one on pay per view. Interesting. I wonder why no match for Kaz. Bully Ray and Book Hogan getting married, huh? Oh, damn shit. For real, whatever. Good luck with that. She probably fucks like her dad. Oh, hey yo. <laughs> hey yo. Sting vs. DLC. Ugh, Sting Wong, take that. Uh, Carlos Rules, that is all. <laughs> Hardy vs. Root vs. Aries. They were supposed to take out Hardy and then make Root vs. Aries in the elimination three way. Aries or Root would have been great, but no fuck. Charismatic Enigma wins because he likes to look fear head on. What the fuck ever. FYI, TNA is only going to have PPV in 2013, Genesis. Lockdown on March. Slam of Arsary, whatever. And Bound for Glory in October or sometime. Could be a good love for them. We'll see. Question for the week. I previously, who all thought was going to win Rumble and most said Barrett or Cena. So who is the final four in the ring? And who are the first two to start the Rumble match? I say Heath Slater number one, entry number two is the Miz. Final four will be Barrett, Sheamus, Cena, and Ziggler. <laughs> Del Rio is the new world champion. He couldn't beat Sheamus in seven matches, but he could beat Big Show in like two tries. Interesting. Fifth for now. Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, CM Punk, Antonio Cesaro, Damien Sandow. I hope Raw was good. Till next week, take care, Mayhem Crew. It's me. It's me. It's Big Pips C. Sent from my iPhone. Thank you, LB. A wonderful, uh, enthusiastic reading, as usual. Good, good to be back to that. Yes, yes. Um... <laughs> it didn't sound quite as painful as last week. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so uh, uh, we want who who's going to win and who's the top, the last four? The final who's the four. final, final four, four? And who's and the, the first, first two, two that's going to start? And the first two, I think Axe and Smash are going to start it again. Wait. Wait, wait. <laughs> that's like eighty nine. You know, I, yeah, actually, no, no. Let's take it around. Let, let, let let's let's do uh, Team Hell No starts it. Oh, I that'd think be that'd cool. be fun. See that. And uh, <laughs> final four, I want to give like mostly who was in the main event of SmackDown. I think last week, uh, Cesaro. Let's pull the throw in there, uh, and then it's going to be all your usual. It's going to be uh, probably Sheamus, Cena, uh, Orton kind of situation. So I think I think they're going to do. For me, I, I I could see them doing Team Hell No as the first two. I think the one that probably makes like the most sense is what they're going to do is going to have like Sheamus and like Heat Slater or someone, yeah. like do that whole few of the three man band thing. Yeah. I think the final four is going to be Barrett, uh, Cesaro, Miz, since Cesaro and Miz are kind of doing their thing, and Cena. Could be, could be, could be. Uh, what about you, Abby? I think uh, Miz is going to go bell to bell. I think he's going to be one of the first two, and then he's going to be one of the last four, but he's not going to win it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say Miz, Cena, uh, Barrett. It's uh, Miz, Miz, Cena, and Orton, and it's either going to be Barrett or uh, or fucking uh, Cesaro, mm -hmm. but not both. Uh, what about you, Josh? All right. Here, here's what I'm going with. All right. Bear with me because this is completely 100% off the wall. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Riz says Husky Harris wins. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, all right. I I agree with uh, Lunchbox. Miz is going bell to bell. Uh, I I I just think he's going to be one or two, and he's going to be in the final four. Um, I don't think he's going to win it though. And that's only because I feel like WWE is going to pull something, um, in the final four. It's my pick is going to be Miz, uh, Kofi, not Ziggler cause he still has money in the bank. Um, doesn't need it. Orton. And the Rock. You think Rock's gonna be in the Rumble? Uh huh. Huh. I think he's. I think he's gonna come in, uh, in the twenties. 
because he's going to lose to CM Punk Ooh. because they're not ready for him to Ooh. drop that belt yet. Yeah. You know what? I I, I, I agree with Chachi. I like that. Because like that. that's that, not only that, but that's a way for him to be in that WWE title main event at WrestleMania uh-huh. and not have to go through Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Well, you guys brought that up last week, and I agreed with you. I don't see Rock going through Elimination yeah, although Chamber. Although they've had done, they, this isn't the first time, they've done before Elimination Chambers at that pay-per-view that were for the number one spot, not the belt. Well, yeah. it, but I don't think they're going to go back to that, though. Uh, uh, with, it, with both, last year, they were both title matches. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think they're going to go back to it. I think they're going to stick with the Elimination Chamber, both being title matches. I, I don't think they're ready for CM Punk to drop the belts. And I don't think it's the right time for Rock to pick it up. Mm -hmm. If they do it this way, and the whole reason why I think they will, is because this is a guaranteed reason to have The Rock in the main event at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. Uh, They don't have to. They don't have to pull any uh, once in a lifetime bullshit like they did last (laughs) year. Uh, He won the Rumble. He gets the title shot. That's end of story yeah because last year was just kind of a challenge right right so so right. <clears throat> yeah i i think uh and and i'm sticking with the uh i was gonna say uh like 30 but i i don't think they're gonna waste that spot on them mm-hmm. i i think they're gonna put i uh, barrett or someone in 30 okay uh i i think it'll be one of the bigger guys just so they can be like, oh my god, he's number 30, and then he gets tossed. Or the Undertaker out of nowhere. Oh no! <laughs> they, they, they did that before. Bobby, what about you? Um, I, I agree with you, Sorg. I think they're going to start with uh, Daniel Bryan and Kane. Uh, I think Daniel Bryan's going to go bell to bell and be one of the final four. Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah, uh, really John Cena illness. will be another one. Sheamus will be another one. And I'm going to go with Barrett as one okay. of the other ones. Uh, from the chat room, we got um, Wrestling Revolution says uh, last four Cena, Christian, Ziggler, Lesnar, Christian. Huh. Oh, uh, yeah. Openers, Miz and Incredible. Cody. Uh, Riz says Husky Harris wins, and the four are Husky <laughs> Harris, Miz, Ziggler, and the Great Kali. Yes. Hey, hey, he's not Husky Harris anymore. He's Bray Wyatt. Whatever. whatever. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we got one more from Alex Cars. Uh, who wants to take that one? I can do it. Wait, wait, wait. I have one last thing for the rumble. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I I like I like the idea of um of the Rock losing to CM Punk and going in the rumble. I think they could also uh, make it so that CM Punk, if CM Punk loses to the Rock and then him show up in the rumble, that could be interesting yeah, too. Could be too. Yeah, I, I kind of I'm kind of with that. Like whoever loses that title match is going to end up in the rumble. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you're welcome. Um, Alex <laughs> Cars says, "Hey there, Wrestling Mayhem ten presenters. Raw's twentieth anniversary marked the first full Raw I've seen in at least a year, and the most important thing I took from it from it all is I can now check Raw off my checklist of shows to watch this year. There were good moments to be had, sure, but you'll probably be uh, uh the blow by <laughs> you'll probably get the blow by blow uh from uh PPC." Uh, no, we didn't. Uh, overall, it was <laughs> decent uh, uh, to good show, and I don't mind the fact that I watched the whole thing. Now, I'd like to address the TNA pay-per-view structure uh, going into the new year. Pre-recorded pay-per-views with no rhyme or reason rather than let's put matches together with a theme are brilliant. Don't let Mad Mike persuade you otherwise. But the fact that they basically nullified the Destination X title shot after only one use of it is ridiculous. Sorg, that's me. Uh, thanks for suggesting a pay-per-view that doesn't exist anymore. I suppose you'll recommend an in-your-house pay-per-view. Actually, they're going to do a Best of In-Your-House uh, DVD I just heard about uh, for me to watch next. Or a working ROHI pay-per-view. <laughs> or if you'll excuse me, I'm sorry, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go save up my money for the Jakara show in October. Those guys haven't steered me wrong yet. Hashtag Colt Cabana uh, Royal Rumble. So there you go. Um, yeah, well, you know, that's before they changed everything. And from what I'm hearing, actually, uh, uh, Sh- uh, Shima was on his Facebook uh, saying that, that the match they did do for the 
pretty much the replacement uh, uh, Ultimate X, the Destination X pay-per-view that's airing in April. Uh, he says it's one of the best matches of his career. So, it, and I guess it was an Ultimate X and everything. Uh, so that's that's something to look forward to. If it it's looks gonna, fun. I, you know, I, let's see this because I, I want to give TNA some credit. Why don't you so bad giving them some credit? Because you're seeing a lot of kind of alternative products come out of TNA. We've had so I, I think they are smartening up. They're filling some holes that WWE doesn't do. Obviously, they're changing the pay-per-view structure. They've hinted at that for a few years now. Um, we have the production that's going on in India. Uh, that Rinka King, I think it's I called. Think I, I don't think that's happening anymore. Well, they did it. And, and maybe yeah. there is a seasonal thing. So maybe it's coming back for the second season. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, they did that. They're doing... Um, aren't they doing like a British boot camp uh, British series? British boot camp, yeah. Which that's is, the only... Like they're trying to really tap into reality TV, and no, of course, of course. But but if it's working for them, it's they're working for. It. We saw the crowds that they're doing in England versus here. Um, so they have an audience there, so they're building content for that audience. I, great, I think, great, right? I think TNA seriously needs credit for this. TNA, any change to the twelve pay per view a year lineup needs yeah. to be done. Yeah, the twelve pay per view a year lineup was a tool that is was used for a war that has already been won. That's right. And it's done and it's skin. It's way too saturated. Mm -hmm. And it's a move WWE should have done a long time ago. So now, I mean, that really, and I feel like as a wrestling fan, that frees me up is now I don't have to make as many decisions. There's the four of them. I was like, oh, great, I can go check those out. Any other things? I'm, I'm curious to see how they position these already filmed months ago pay-per-view on-demand deals. Since they're new content, like it's not like like WWE would do the on demand thing where they're like just like old DVDs, like CM Punk DVD now on demand, you know, or or this old C the Stone Cold DVD from three to six months ago now on demand for ten bucks, right? Uh, that's what I feel like is happening here with TNA, but they're building new content for it, um, I, and it feels like partially they're doing that just to. Um, maybe they're just doing that to fill in their obligations to the pay per view company. Possibly, yeah. Potentially, um, and 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 lose less money on the process uh, of doing so. Uh, so it is a very throwaway thing. But again, it's curious to see how they build up to those. And and obviously they're not going to be as important. They're not expecting the big numbers, but they didn't really take much for them to do them. So okay, and and maybe they you know see how that structure changes the show that they don't have to build every four weeks to something. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know you're going to see title changes on the show. The show is going to become more important. Because stuff's going to have to happen for three months in between all those pay-per-views. Exactly. So so I kind of want to go back to the show and see how they deal with that at this point. Because uh, it, like it, it feels like a new beginning structure-wise, and I want to see how they handle it uh, from here. Uh, great. They're doing something. They're becoming an alternative. They're not, hey, we're, we're, we're completely different, but we have four pay-per-views that don't mean anything just like the other guys. Now it's something different. What, what are your thoughts, uh, WrestleFan? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the exact way I think. I'm very, I, The minute they announced it, that they were doing less pay-per-views, I'm like, this is the smartest move any company, mainstream company, could have made. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a way for them to focus on their stories. It's a way to get, like you mentioned, the TV show to mean more because they have to focus on those storylines. And people were mentioning like, oh, well, you're not really doing away with the uh, the, the, the uh, 12 pay-per-views. You're just giving pay-per-views for less money. But like you mentioned, there, there are specific pay-per-views focused on little to no story. Yeah. Like the X Division one is like pretty much just matches. Same goes for I think they're doing a Joker's Wild like tournament one Tag tournament wh where the winner gets like a twenty five thousand dollar check. <laughs> like, right. but, but then it's a right. small it's a small story. It's not like you know something you know ridiculously huge, and it, especially like nowadays in TNA, if it's not like Lockdown or Slammiversary or Bound for Glory, there's no big storylines. Cool. Like Genesis. There was no storylines at all, in my opinion. Hey, I want to notice, like, if, we, if you look at their site uh, under pay per view, the next one listed is uh, uh, just lockdown. lockdown. So, yeah, they're skipping a month and then doing lockdown in March. So, yeah. Hey, lunchbox. 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 Hello. Hello. You can't hear me. Oh no! Oh no! Is Hello. It yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Hey, lunchbox. You uh, remember what we did on Sunday? What when the people <laughs> pay per view was going us. on? <laughs> I don't think he can hear us. 
Um, I want you guys to know that I can't hear you. I'm on, I can only actually hear you on the feed. <laughs> oh no! Uh, well, there goes that joke. All right, so, okay. all right. Oh, we'll, 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 well, we'll, but, but well, you guys were watching the Golden Globes. Instead yeah, we of the watched pay-per-view. the Golden Globe Awards instead of the TNA pay per view. That should tell you how much we care about TNA pay per views. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll try to get him back here. I actually have nothing I can fill in here until we get to the uh, indie minute. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, call me back. I call you back. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God. Uh, let's uh, let's do something else. <laughs> something else. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Mad Mike has something to say, which I'm sure will give some more thoughts on what's going on there. What the hell? It's so low. So TNA is making a major change to its pay-per-view schedule. Four major pay-per-views. Sacrifice, Lockdown, Sunniversary, and Bound for Glory. This would be great, except that they took out the only fucking pay-per-view in the year that makes them interesting. That's right, kids. There's no more Destination X. So... That whole whoever is X Division champion by the time Destination X is out can get a shot at the world title and, you know, maybe have some title progression, how Austin Aries got to be so big. All that shit that we liked about last year is no more. At least for right now. So, yeah. Way to fucking go, DNA, because who did the shit about Genesis? I think the only reason they threw Genesis in there was because they just decided this this week and realized, oh shit, we have a pay-per-view on Sunday. I guess we have to throw that one in, too. Well, uh, yeah. So, three steps forward, two steps back. You know, good job. Same as it ever was. Alright, peace, bitches. Excellent. Uh, LB, uh, are you with us? I'm back! Oh, ah! God! That's <laughs> loud. Nice. Alright, so we got that. I'm- Live. That's good. Uh, um, so, so his thoughts on the pay per view. Let's see what uh, is going on. For Woo! Oh, fucking big attack! <laughs> I want you guys to take one note. One note. One simple note here. One note. I shut Raw off, and I have confirmation on this. Right in the mid, right at the beginning of the Rock concert, which, by the way. Fuck you, Rock. Man boobs are sweet. Want to hate on Paul Hammond for having some wonderful man breasticles? Well, fuck you, Dan. You had surgery once to fix yours, you son of a bitch. God damn, I hate you, Rock. What? Mm-hmm. I never what? thought I'd say that, by the way. I always thought, like, I was always going to love The Rock and all of his catchphrases and the eyebrow and all that other shit. And then he had to come back and ruin it. This is why I never want Ric Flair to come back, like, full time. Mm-hmm. By the way, Ric Flair elbow dropping inanimate objects is better than whatever the fuck Sin Cara does. That's a fact. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. True. If you want to have Ric Flair elbow dropping a phone book, I'll watch that shit on repeat. I don't care. Ric Flair is the greatest of all time, forever and ever. Woo! Listen, all I want is for The Rock to lose. I just, at this point, CM Punk needs to just, he needs to win clean. No shield, the no Ryback, no nothing. He needs to win clean over the Rock, and the Rock needs to go fuck away again. Is he, he's promoting a movie right now. Have we heard about this movie yet? Because if we haven't heard about the movie yet, then he's going to stick around for a little bit until it's promo time. It's got G.I. Joe. But the, the Rock just needs to go. That's, that's all. Woo. Bo F. F. Is for Francis, and if you think otherwise, go fuck yourself. Bye. <laughs> there you go. Well, you guys didn't know about the rock thing? What rock thing? Remember? Yeah, because that's the thing. I, I know this segment's sort of early. Remember when <laughs> there was that era where the rock was putting on interesting matches, but he wasn't wearing like his tights. He was wearing like a sweatshirt and like sweatpants. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Do you think it, it, it wasn't just because, like, he wanted to wear a sweatshirt and sweatpants? 
It was because he had surgery on his pecs. What? Because they were so fucking saggy, he had to have surgery on them. So him going on Raw and insulting people by telling them they have Twinkie tits mm. is the most asinine fucking thing I have ever fucking seen. You, re- you realize, like, like these guys don't actually hate each other, right? No, Everybody loves Twinkies. <laughs> Wrestle fan, um, listen, uh, you're surrounded by a group of your peers, and we really didn't have to be the ones to tell you this, but um, wrestling's not real, buddy. Oh, no, I know it's not. Okay. We're having an intervention right now. <laughs> be a star. Be a star, Rock. Be but star. the character yeah, I, aspect of The Rock He's a fucking douchebag. Well, yeah, that that's kind of his character. That's kind of who he is, right? So he's always been that that's way. That's kind of been. I know you were a little young when this happened, but that this is kind. <laughs> this is kind of how it was. Oh, we'll get into how young he yeah. is later Can in the episode. Yeah, but there's you know we'll get into that. There's, there's so evolution with in that, progress. With that, okay. if you haven't had enough of a uh, wrestle fan talking about wrestling, uh, it's time for uh, that time of the week where we talk about uh, untelevised wrestling, amateur falling down. It's time for the minute of any minute of any wrestling. Of the minute like, of any minute. The minute of any minute. Oh, of thank you, Sorg. Yes. Uh, so yeah, let's so get then. dive right into all this news. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, and it's a thing. I don't know if it was news when uh, we had the show last week, but uh, we'll mention it now. El Generico is going to WWE. Holy shit! Yeah, fucking. We'll right. see how long that lasts. Man, Just throwing it out there. No, I mm-hmm. never thought of Daniel mm-hmm. Bryan. Yep. Uh, but the, yeah, what, but the this I- this is a luchador. This isn't. Uh, a very, very good <laughs> Matt. Canadian luchador. <laughs> <laughs> a very, very good Matt technician. This is a luchador. Mm. Right. A- at the you know, basis. Like, you know, like Sin Cara, who's failing right now? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, like I said, let's see uh, Let's see how far this goes. Everyone left when you started. I just wanted to point that out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who left? Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, well, I'm not well, kidding. Wow. You're not kidding. No, no they walked away. They're, 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 uh, hold on. They're, yeah, he's gone. There's Bobby's gone. Uh, LV's gone. And there's you. And uh, I feel so loved. I, no, I couldn't go hey, anywhere. Hey, I actually I commented on something you said without, no, let's go. Thank without you. Thank telling you. you to go fuck yourself. Okay. Sweet. Continue. So the reason I bring it up is because Pro Wrestling Guerrilla had their big uh, DDT4 event this past weekend in Reseda, California. Uh, that was won by the Young Bucks when they defeated the team of Kevin Steen and El Generico in the finals. Um, it was, it was a, what I hear it was a phenomenal tournament, uh, and they gave a very emotional send-off to El Generico uh, after the match. Kevin Steen uh, giving some very kind words. Uh, a man that's uh, you know traveled all around with El Generico has been his tag partner, been his you know bitter rival. You know, that's it was it was a very uh, touching and sort of uh, very heartfelt moment. Um, so sending El Generico farewell to the big WWE um, and we at the Wrestling Mayhem show obviously wish El Generico uh, well and hope for it, you know, to him for him to prosper in the uh, the uh, big giant world that is the WWE. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa. Sorry, OK. The audio's on. Sorry. <laughs> touching moment. uh uh, interrupted by metal music. Okay. Um, pro- yourself. <laughs> so if you want more information on Pro Wrestling Gorilla, you can go to uh, www.prowrestlinggorilla.com. Uh, get more information on the next events when they come up. Uh, and go check them out if you are in the California area. Like like an Alexander Carr's friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is more to the local Pittsburgh area. Our good friends at Renegade Wrestling Alliance have an event coming up this weekend on the 19th, uh, which is a Saturday, for Uprising 5, which Sorgatron Media will be in attendance for that one. It should be an absolutely great event. Uh, the main event, Strider, uh, getting a shot at the RWA title against Shane Taylor. Um, also a rematch from last month, uh, women's match, uh, Sassy Steffi versus Darcy Dixon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe a contract signing with a uh, friend of the show, Ryan Edmonds and Lodi, uh, former WCW star Lodi. Uh, so that should be an interesting event. If you want more information, you can go to rwalive.com. And like I mentioned, Sorgatron Mania will be there. Sorgan Chachi 
Yeah. Be there in attendance to be First filming. time at RWA since what October, I think. Yeah, this is the, wow. This, this is our homecoming, man. This is like the uh, the first RWA show we've done in a good three months. Yeah, I am excited. I miss I miss hanging out with Wheels. Uh, we've had to leave. We have to leave uh, 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 Bissy and Chris to to deal with him. Yeah. Uh, so do so you, that'll be a blast. Old, do you miss old Asian old Asian grandma? I I miss oh I miss old God. Asian grandma. Why do you have to bring it up? Tashi, <laughs> fuck you, wrestle fan. Grandma, you know, oh, I, mean, I forgot. Oh, uh, you know, you know. I, I like the people there. I like the people. I like the wrestlers. Everybody's <laughs> God cool. damn it! I dig it. We don't have to set up a screen. It's oh. good stuff. It's a fun time. It is seriously. It's, it's, it's a fun time. I love the crowd there. Uh, so son of a bitch. And we're gonna try. We're gonna try. We're real hard to uh, uh, make sure to get. Like we did an interview with uh, at RWA last year. Uh, with Scott Saren and and G Raver after they won the belts, uh, so we're gonna try try to really get to like as part of when we go film something like this, we we we're gonna try to pull somebody mm-hmm. uh, aside at the end of the night and and uh, and uh, have a short interview with them to the have here on the show. Uh, so just you know, hey, we're surrounded by wrestlers. Maybe we should talk to them, Chachi. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> maybe, maybe this would be a good idea. We've been doing this for a year. I think we kind of settled into what we're doing. We can kind of expand on what Wait, we do that night on. a little bit. What's up? We're allowed to talk to them. I think we're allowed to talk to the wrestlers. No shit. Yeah, it is the twenty tens. I didn't know that. No, no, no it's touching. Twenty tens. Yeah, touchy. Don't touch them. No touching. Especially the ladies. Except, except there's for no Taylor. ladies there. There's two ladies. No, there's a ladies match. We just talked about the ladies match. Did you not Wrestle listen to me? Oh, oh, no, no. Sassy stuff comes out with a machete now. You, uh, you, you Ooh. stopped talking about El Generico, and I was focusing on being nice, so I, think, I stopped listening. <laughs> I think, I think you'd be a fan. He's like, gotta be nice. I'm gotta just saying. Be nice. I'm just saying. I think you'd be a fan of Darcy Dixon. It's a new year, so I'm trying to be nice to you. Hmm. See how that goes. As well you as only all the said others. fuck you wrestle fan once, so I'll say you're improving. Well, Anyways. You you brought up Asian grandma. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was all anger. ready to go back to to filming wrestling for this year, and then you brought up Asian grandma. Yeah. And it all went downhill. And this is this is their uh fifth year anniversary, I believe. Oh so. man, Super Oprah. Super, Super Oprah's Oprah. gonna be there. We should interview Super Oprah, actually. You get a Super. <laughs> I, I just sent a request for somebody, but we should just nix that and talk to Super Oprah. Chachi, Ch- that's one you. Chachi can talking with uh, Super Oprah. I think that would be tremendous. I don't want to talk to. Super. I think you should talk to Super Oprah. I run the I'll camera. Do it. I'd get her on the she's, show. She's a nice lady. <laughs> I run the camera. You talk to the wrestlers. Oh yeah. That's how it works. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, we can get wheels in on it too. So you know, I have nothing. You can, you can flank I, the I interview. Don't, we can. We can I can't that. talk to these people. You can't. <laughs> I can't tell the. I can't talk to these wrestling people. I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> these especially, people, especially the Asian grandmas in the cross dressing. Yeah. So I can't talk to any of them. Fucking so Asian grandma. Nobody Book wears Asian a grandma shirt. For Chachi. What's that? Butch, bu- book Asian grandma for Chachi. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, why do you stand where you're not supposed to, lady? Every show. Every Get the show. fuck out of my way. There's a time oh, for an I autograph. Like That's all I'm saying. Okay, anyways. The <laughs> because the cameraman will put me in, take my image, and make me immortal in the eyes of fan, the what's people next? at home. <laughs> oh my god, what's next? <laughs> Okay, I was going to wait for him to finish. That, that, that I just hilarious. feel like we'd be here all night. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, since we touched on the Pittsburgh area, let's touch down about the weekend that's going to be Pittsburgh. down in the Texas area, because it's going to be a very oh. awesome weekend. <laughs> Texas doesn't exist. It says, it's Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. It says, what do you mean, you people? And I, can't, oh, I, I, and and I didn't realize it wasn't going to center on the screen. I, I, I didn't know Robbie Down- Robert Downey Jr. was a fan. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The first, uh, it, the first thing I want to talk, mention is a company that uh, I haven't mentioned before, but I definitely think they do deserve a mention. Uh, they have been progressively uh, putting on pretty awesome shows in the Texas area, and this Saturday they are going to do that again. Uh, the National Wrestling Alliance Branded Outlaw Wrestling, they are the newest uh, NWA affiliate, uh, and they have been putting on some pretty awesome shows in the San Antonio area. And I want uh, this- to look who their one friend is. <laughs> Hey, look, it's hey. a wrestle fan. Right off, yeah, well, they have like a thousand likes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so they're the only one up. I know, so, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. But, um, well, it's not the only person, not the only person on that roster that, uh, well, I'm not on the roster. Not the only, 
We wait, know wait, people that are on that train? roster. What? 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 Put, put wrestle fan on the roster. Uh, included on that roster is friend of the Mayhem Show and uh, Pittsburgh native Ray Rowe will be there. Uh, they just crowned uh, last uh, show their new heavyweight champion Jack Dane when he defeated Ray Rowe in the finals of their heavyweight title tournament, so he will be there as well. Uh, a lot of great action from the uh, Texas wrestling stars, uh, the Kings of the Underground, who were crowned new NWA World Tag Team Champions at their last event, make the first defense of their titles against the <laughs> Dagger Brothers. Uh, also, you'll see former WWE stars Funaki and Rob Conway will be there. That's going to be a very awesome. God, what a fucking selling point that is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, don't Rob you shit Conway on Funaki. and Funaki. I am straight up rigid right now. <laughs> Former WWE Cruiserweight Champion, okay? Funaki. Funaki's a fucking man. He's also Wrestle a Packers man. Fan. Calm down. You're making me sick. All this talk <laughs> about Funaki. Jesus. <laughs> Texas Anarchy said he was going to go uh, see these guys, but then he saw they were friends with Russell Fan. Uh, oh, yeah, that's usually what happens. Uh, but yeah, you can go check them out. Uh, they have a website, Branded Outlaw Wrestling. That's my only real big complaint about them is the website is not really that up to date and that, you know, there's not a lot of information on there. Um, but if you want to go check them out, you can follow them on Facebook, Branded Outlaw uh, Wrestling. Uh, so go check them out. That's New Year's Revolution this Saturday in San Antonio, Texas. And I hope to see you there if you're in the area. But I will also like to see you the very next night in Austin, Texas, for our good friends at Anarchy Championship Wrestling, holding their uh, six-year anniversary for Guilty by Association 7, which is their big event that they hold every year at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas. It's going to be a really fun night, which includes Jerry Lynn's final match in Texas, final match in ACW as he takes on Showtime Scott Summers, uh, two men that have fought against each other, that have been tag team champions, and they are really going to culminate it. Uh, at Guilty by Association. Also, friend of the show, Rachel Summerlin, makes her defense of the ACW heavyweight title as she takes on Darren Childs. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, good stuff. ACH versus Matthew Palmer for the World Hardcore title. Just announced today there's going to be a double Jeopardy match for the uh, American Joshi title. Uh, and there's going to be a tons of a lot of great Texas stars, a lot of stars from you know different parts of the U.S. Uh, and it's going to be a really awesome event. So come there, come there, come to the Mohawk, have some beer, see some great wrestling. Uh, say goodbye to Jerry Lynn. Uh, it's going to be a really awesome time. If you want more information on that, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com to get tickets for that event. I highly encourage you to get your tickets early and get to the Mohawk early because, because Guilty by Association is usually one of their highest selling as far as attendance goes. Uh, th that building is usually packed. Uh, so I would highly encourage you to get there at a good time and uh, get your tickets early. And I hope to see you all there in the Austin, Texas area. Uh, and quickly, just some more things I wanted to mention. Uh, National Pro Wrestling Day is coming up. National Pro Wrestling Day. National Pro Day. Wrestling Day. Okay, that's it. Uh, <laughs> I thought there was going to be more people saying it. But that's okay. Uh, because uh, it's developing into a really awesome stuff. More matches are starting to be announced. Uh, I'm excited. A lot of Texas talent's really getting announced, and I'm glad that a lot of people are seeing. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of different areas are showcasing talent that not a lot of people have heard of, so that's going to be a really awesome time. If you're in the Philadelphia area, the event is 100% free as far as attendance goes. However, if you are not in Philadelphia, you can still order the pay-per-view, or the iPay-per-view, I should say, on SmartMark Video on Demand.com, SMVOD.com. Uh, it's $14.99 for both the afternoon and the evening card, or $9.99 for each. Uh, it should be a very interesting time, and I hope that uh, you can get to check it out and go see some talent uh, that you have seen before and some talent you may not have seen before. So it's going to be a really awesome time. And like I said, if you want more information, go to NationalProWrestlingDay.com. 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 So, yeah, check them out, and I hope to uh, see everyone at that event as well. Excellent. Also, uh, uh, can I mention on that one, sir? Sure, go ahead. Uh, I do have news uh, from the Facebook. Uh, Chuck, Chuck Roberts has been on there talking about this uh, in the IWC match. Uh, uh, so, friends of the show should be involved with that. Uh, it, it's uh, They're talking, there's murmurs of doing a title match. For their match, uh, so I, I would presume heavyweight. I, I think I, I actually might have, he might have actually said IWC heavyweight title. I I, I think on there. Uh, so keep an eye on that. I think they're going to announce it on Monday. Does that seem right? 
Uh, something like that. So within that the next sounds week, like a day. That sounds like a day of the week <laughs> that somebody can announce something on. Uh, so keep an eye out for that on the uh, mostly on the uh, IWCWrestling.com, but but the Facebook.com is again kind of more uh, updated because everybody's kind of on there. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But every, everything does get around to the website eventually. You know, uh, but but definitely that's where you get it first. Uh, so so very excited to get you know somebody local, somebody you know friends of of the show, friends of Sorgatron Media, uh, being involved in this event and, and to see uh, what kind of splash they make. So very cool. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is something that's coming up a couple months away, but I do want to mention it. I believe Ciro mentioned it on the uh, Best of Mayhem Show Facebook page, so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, the ECWA Super Eight Tournament. Uh, for those that do not know, the Super Eight Tournament is a big thing that happens. Pr- uh, every year in the independent wrestling world uh, that showcases a lot of young talent. Usually the winner of the tournament is a star that really is going to get propelled uh, to uh, big things on the independent wrestling world. It's a big tournament every year. Uh, some of the participants have already been announced, including uh, ROH star Michael Elgin, a uh, friend of the show Facade, uh, former uh, or current ROH star, former WWE star Mike Mondo, uh, the last uh, winner last year, Papa Don, uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a really awesome show. That's uh, April thirteenth. Uh, like I said, so it's a couple months away, but I do want to mention it here on the show. Uh, it is in Delaware, so if you are in that area, I definitely encourage you to go check them out. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to ecwaprowrestling.com uh, and go check them out. They should have more information up there. They do, about these- but unfortunately, what they don't have is an exciting video for me to show you. So oh, they do not. That. That's no, not an exciting video to show me about the event. <laughs> Get on the video ball. Come on, that. guys. Um, but speaking of videos oh, and, man. and really awesome things with videos, oh, you guys no. remember Five Dollar Wrestling? Five Dollar Wrestling. Wait, did we do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't we're, remember. we're doing it now. <laughs> okay. And no one else is going to do it. Okay. Uh, no, that's that's right. Right. <laughs> move on, move on. Good job, Bobby. That's they all I deserve. I, Survive the whole wrestling. They are uh, having an eye pay per view coming up. I believe it is uh, February 1st, I believe. Uh, I believe that's the date. Uh, it's going to be a. Yep, that's a, a day. And guess how much? It's $5. <laughs> For their uh, straight out of Compton event, it's going to be uh, inter- a very interesting uh uh show for those that don't know five uh, dollar wrestling uh colt cabana and uh believe marty de rosa big parts of that uh think mystery science theater but professional wrestling it's gonna be fun i believe one of the yes. matches already announced is uh big donnie going one-on-one with former wwe star cliff compton aka domino um that is gonna be a very interesting event you can check them out check out freight train and like i said it's only Wonderful five dollars like <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah this looks like some indie shows i've been to oh yeah <laughs> and that's yeah. a sad part it is 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 this is this looks like that indie show that you went to that you that you don't want anybody going to and representing indie wrestling but they're <laughs> doing it on purpose it's fantastic it, it's like the, the greatest in joke ever it's ever. like they took the you are not getting book concept and just made it like a like a, a star they made them yeah. stars yeah uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm watching this video. <laughs> Big, Big Donnie. Uh, I'm not going to listen to the audio. <laughs> I, I don't know a lot about Big Donnie. Is this, that's who this, is. Say, is this Big Donnie here in this thing? Yeah, it's, his physique is amazing. Uh, how does your body get like that? Remember, uh, that? remember that stomach pump from the awesome cast earlier, Chachi? I think this guy might need that. <laughs> so. So yeah, you can go check them out uh, if you want more information and to buy that event. Go to five dollar wrestling dot com. The actual event is in Charlestown, Indiana, um, which sounds like the perfect place for this event <laughs> for this to be held. So yes, uh, so I definitely encourage you to go check them out. Five dollar wrestling dot com. Go support them. Go support Coca Bana and Mario DeRosa doing awesome stuff in the world of professional wrestling. And that, my friends, is the indie minute. For there this you go, week. there you go. Thank you, Wrestle Fan. Is everybody good? Right, uh, LB, you're still alive, right? I'm good. Good, good. I, I'm, I'm always worried after last week. I want to check on you. So I'm good. I, everything. I ate some dinner, and it's all stayed down. Good. Yeah. So we're we're in good shape. I was worried when you went for a walk there for a little bit. I had to make a phone call and pee and find my phone and <laughs> masturbate just uh, furiously. Yeah, just in. like, well, you're going? like you're my going? dick is bloody and raw. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? We've been told in the chat room, Russell fan, that the stream is ten dollars, not five. It yeah, I heard $10. about that. What the fuck? Are you kidding? That's yeah, ridiculous. That's, 
That is crazy. <laughs> That's <advertising>. ridiculous. <laughs> what? The, that kind of kills the concept, doesn't it? False advertising. It is. Ten dollar wrestling. Ten dollar wrestling. What yeah, the hell? That um, was too much. Too much. That's not in this economy, damn it. No, um, anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that controversy some other time. Blame high spots, they say. Uh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, $49.95 dollar wrestling. Uh, um, it, it was, hey, wait, and with that, thank you, uh, WrestleFan and all the all the uh, uh, fans that chimed in. Uh, we'll, we're going to go check out what else is going on in the Sorgatron Media uh, universe. Uh, and come back with Remember When and the unveiling of the nominees for the Miamis. We'll be right back. Mayhem Show. <laughs> uh, which one is your uncle, then? Bobby, you getting call here in a minute. Both of them. <laughs> Both of them. Both of them. They are very talented individuals. <laughs> come back. I need you. <laughs> and... Whirling circle. Bobby not. is back. Hello, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already laughed. <laughs> Somebody call my mama. Wait, that was like, get, up, get up, get up, get up. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, getting ready to beat this game. What are you doing? We have to go shoot on song. No, it's not. I got another week. Vacation ended two days ago. It did not. My calendar says vacation. Check it again. I'm telling you. It says vacation. Oh. That's strange. You better go get uh, ready. Yeah. 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 Check out Unsung at pittsburghonvideo.org. Welcome back. It's that time of the show where we look back at our corn dogs and remember when? Hmm. <laughs> what the hell? What the shit? <laughs> I'm gonna have this weird strobe effect with Bobby. <laughs> just, he just booed the shit out of us. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. He was, I don't ready to go. And there he is. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Dance, Bobby, dance. Corn dog, 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 corn dog. So this week, <laughs> there was a great conversation that um, we had last night on the Hangout, um, where uh, uh, AJ was. We were talking about like kids, they just having a kid and stuff, and 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 maybe some of us will procreate here eventually. Um, but but that idea. Wrestle fan is my son. <laughs> that's that's true too. That's true too. Um, but the idea of who was your favorite growing up, kind of like what initially was your favorite growing up, like like the the. The structural years, you know, that 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 we had. Um, so, like, 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 for instance, like, kind of as an example, uh, you know, mine growing up, mine was definitely like Hulk Hogan. Really, the years coming up, well, you know, I found it, we really didn't have much choice. It was Hulk Hogan or Bus because he was everywhere. You know, uh, you know, versus today, you have like a kid could like Marie Mysterio or Cena or or Daniel Bryan, like that one kid uh, that that with a Make a Wish thing that was here locally. Um, so, but yeah, it was Hulk Hogan. Like I was completely enamored with Hulk Hogan. He was bigger than life. He had the cartoon on Saturday morning, and everybody else really was second string to him for me. And now I know all of us kind of came up in wrestling in different eras and whatnot. So, um, so I, I just kind of wonder, you know, what, what going around, who was the guy or girl whatever uh that you whatever you're into like i was really surprised I, we, we asked my wife and I, I you know she kind of went up through you know kind of the same era as me she's like only two years older than i am um and and i know she talked a lot about sting uh back in the day but i did not know this her favorite growing up was rowdy roddy piper which really surprised me because I'm like, oh, this is during the rock and wrestling era and all that kind of stuff. Where it really was like a bad, bad guy, right? She's like, yeah. I was like, it's like well, that's interesting. And then she's like, think about the rest of my family. I'm like, well, that does make sense. 
So there you go. Uh, and so I want to go around the horn. What, what, what was your favorite kind of growing up? Uh, WrestleFan, you were there with us in the conversation, so I know you kind of uh, already kind of have an idea in your head from this. Oh, Lord, this is going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> and see how uh, young he yeah, is. Because I know, you know, that generation, you know, Hulk Hogan uh, was your Texas guy. Texas Anarchy says you're Hulk- gonna, thinks you're going to say Kelly Kelly. It's not going to be Kelly Kelly. <laughs> uh, uh, um, for, you know, for those that generation, Hulk Hogan was your guy. Hulk Hogan was never my guy. No, no, uh, no, no. My, my, my favorite thing of seeing uh, wrestling was Brock Lesnar like murder Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. on like a SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And I thought like, holy shit, why is this super old guy wrestling like this jacked up guy? Like, and I just thought Lesnar was a horrible person because he was beating up an old man. Um, yeah. Not that he was beating up a legend. Um, and some people would say The Rock. And I, you know. I got into them to wrestling when Rock was leaving. Um, I remember like one of the ones I was first like enamored with, and I thought was just absolutely amazing was uh, Rob Van Dam. Like for some reason, mm-hmm. and I know he wasn't the big guy. Like I know he wasn't net, like at that era, which was like two thousand two or so. Like he wasn't that big guy. He's the guy that got your attention. Is the point exactly? And you know, I like, remember if you had watching a poster him on your wall growing up as an eight year old wrestling fan. I did. I had a, the first T-shirt, like wrestling T-shirt, I ever got was a Rob Van Dam T-shirt. Nice. Um, and like, and I think it's partially because I was born in Michigan. I don't know if I told the story, but I am born in Michigan, and I'm born like sort of near Battle Creek. So I think I'm obviously yeah. like automatically supposed to be his fan. Um, but like, I remember like watching it makes him. Absolutely and, like, no sense. Go on, well, but that makes well, no that, sense. That, that's like that's like people thinking like 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 you know. Well, I, people, I should no, probably no, no. Like not, that I'm makes perfect Pittsburgh. sense because a lot of people think I'm automatically a Shawn Michaels fan because I'm from San Antonio. Yeah. There's you a- know, but but that's the thing. I remember watching Raw and I saw like the fact that you know how we talk about uh, Randy Orton can hit an RKO like out of his asshole. Like Rob Van Dam could do that with a five star frog splash. Like, you could do it anywhere, like, in any, like, they could be, like, you know, outside the ring, like, like in a weird position. He could be the, on the completely other side, and he could hit it. You know, I thought, you know, seeing a guy whose, like, legs were probably made out of, like, silly putty, they were, like, way too flexible. I like think it was fun to watch. It was so much fun to watch, and, and it got me enamored, and it got me, you know, focused on it. Um, and he became one of my favorites. Now, nowadays, he's not the same Rob Van Dam he was, but I think, you know, he was the one that caught my attention. And he was the one that, you know, not only made me appreciate pro wrestling, but made me appreciate the athleticism that went behind it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's, that's mine. Excellent. Uh, Bobby, we'll see if your strobe settles down here. You were there uh, last night for the conversation <laughs> as well. So uh, who was who your favorite going up? Yeah, um, I, I said last night in the Hangout, uh, Big Boss Man was actually one of my favorites. No idea why. Well, you he had, just you always gave us was. A reason I always last had night. His, his action figure and and just he he was awesome. I thought he was a cop that wrestled Cobb County, Georgia. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, also, ma- also Macho Man too was one always one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But awesome. yeah, awesome. those two guys probably growing up. Uh, what about you, LB? Um, I, I too was in the Hulk Hogan era. You like Hulk Hogan. That's just how it was. Um, and I also, I was also a really big fan of, uh, Jake, the snake Roberts. I, uh, I don't know why he was, I mean, he was always a heel, but I just, I, he's fucking awesome. He's got a snake and ah, he's so strong. Um, but when I really, really, really got into wrestling, I was a Bret Hart fan. Mm-hmm. Through and through, absolutely, one hundred percent. Nobody better than Bret Hart. You know, hated Shawn Michaels with a passion because he wrestled against Bret. You know, stuff like that. So, absolutely, definitely, Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that kind of shows, like, like, well, they began a kind of different era, but like when they, Bret was coming up. And I remember I was more excited at the Hogan tag team match at WrestleMania Nine. <laughs> like, like I was still the Hulk Hogan fan, like all the way through through NWO. You know, it was still always Hulk Hogan for me. So, um, and Chashi, Chashi, what you got? Oh, I have. It, it's a three part answer because I've come and gone so you've much. Had many childhoods. No, I, I've uh, just yeah. I, I've come and gone through watching wrestling so much mm-hmm. um it, it started with uh jake the snake mm-hmm. um because the guy came out to the ring with a big ass snake <laughs> and uh, it's just and the mullet the <laughs> mullet <laughs> um 
and then I I watched it for a little bit with my dad, and I stopped watching it. And then I came back, and it was the whole uh, factions thing with uh, the nation and all of them, and it, it was the Rock. And then I left again, and then I came back, and it was Cena. So I mean, every so often I'll I'll stop watching and wrestling, and then there'll be one wrestler that will bring me back in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you've had many eras of uh, of that going on. Yeah. So excellent. Uh, so yeah, tell us tell us yours. Uh, since uh, Juggalo John in the in the chat was talking about how when he came up, it was mostly like the really cartoonish characters. Um, Oh, I'm trying to find his message here. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I keep getting distracted by the corn dog picture. <laughs> corn dog. 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 Says, corn dog. I don't know. Corn he has a picture of Sabu and says Ultimate Warrior Forever. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite wrestler growing up, uh, they were the, the comic book style wrestlers, Alt- Undertaker, Warrior, all the WCW mid-card gold. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when it was ridiculous as, as the stuff we saw uh, on our uh, Facebook group this week of the, the promo pictures. Go look at that article if you get a chance. Holy crap. I never heard of the, half these guys. Mark Gindrak Wildcat a, Willie. Wildcat Willie. Mark Gindrak as a basketball player, was it? or, or? Well, his, name, his name was Basket Case. And there was the uh, the oh, bobsled uh, medalist that they hired. <laughs> okay, um, Wheel says Sting. Was he Jamaican? Uh, Riz says Bret Hart. No, he wasn't. He was very uh, like maybe White. Icelandic or something. I don't know. Um, he was from Ghana, Africa. Ghana, West Africa. Ghana, West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> like Kofi. So on that note, let's toss it over to the minute of mayhem, and we'll be right back with the Mayhemies unveiling mayhem. Hey Mayhemers, it's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, so I know I called in with a voicemail about TNA, but um, yeah, no Destination X. And they filmed their two pay-per-view specials already. Now, uh, I know people don't like spoilers, so I'm not going to talk about them much here, but really? Filming them already? Isn't that kind of anticlimactic, especially when you know they're not supposed to mean anything to begin with? Now you're really basically flat out telling us they don't mean anything, because nothing is happening on them. They're not really pay-per-view specials, they're more like... I don't know, like something you'd put on for National Pro Wrestling Day. Like, it's fucking... It's not like a Clash of Champions thing where there's actually title matches and things of that nature. It's just... Hey, people are gonna wrestle. That's it. I mean, it's like... They're basically glorified house shows. At least that's what it seemed like. I'm sure they're good matches. TNA has talented wrestlers. But what's the fucking point? Um, apart from that, Genesis sure was a thing last week. Uh, again, TNA holding pattern. Nothing happened. Not a damn thing happened. Again, another pay-per-view. But, at least we don't have to talk about another TNA pay-per-view until WrestleFan gets challenged to a cage match at lockdown. Um... So yeah, Raw was sure a 20th anniversary without really any major returning stars or anything like that. I don't understand why the thousandth Raw was treated almost more important than the 20th anniversary. That just seems wrong to me. But we got to see the new Hall of Famer, Mick Foley, who I will be seeing at the Hall of Fame because I got my tickets. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, expect many live updates from Mad Mike the week of WrestleMania because, oh man, it's going to be fucking crazy. Um, and The Rock sure did a concert last night. Sure did a concert. He did a thing. Can, can we just have him shut up? Just once? Uh, anyway. I still don't think The Rock's going to beat CM Punk at the Rumble. I think he's going to be in my Elimination Chamber. But I guess we'll see what happens. All right, well, this is Mad Mike for the minute.
Peace, bitches. I do. I do want to mention one point because I do. I, you know, he did bring up the point of the fact that you know the you know these special TNA pay per views that they're doing really aren't meaning anything because they're taping them previously. I do want to bring up the point. Does Destination X really mean anything other than these people are wrestling? No, no, no. They they, they did. I mean, they introduced a little bit with that title shot uh, situation. But yeah, but I, still. Besides that, it's a lot of like thrown together matches. Yeah, but but it, it, it's kind of like uh, the, the the thing came up, and I think we we discussed this on the Facebook or somewhere, where it's like, wait, wait, we just want the wrestling, and we want less of the crappy storylines. Holy crap, they're giving us just the wrestling, and we just have the show. So maybe it will be worth it uh, uh, to that point where where some of us are just like, I just want the wrestling, I just want to see good wrestling, and, and here it is, you know. And it's the two things: X division and tag team wrestling, the stuff we want, you know. Uh, us, you know, I mean, that's this is the one for the smart marks and everything because it's going to bring in a bunch of indie guys that get some exposure. I'm sure they get some build up on on the shows uh, leading up to it. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we'll see how it goes. It's an experiment. I give them a lot of credit for trying it. So, mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, all right, with that, Bobby, uh, let's continue with your uh, new segment. Comments from the unwashed masses. Yes, uh, it's where I round up different comments from the goings-on on on Facebook. (laughs) Um, The first one comes to us uh, from last night's uh, 20th anniversary Raw Mm -hmm. from that uh, feed from WWE. Uh, Best rock concert ever. Adding the rock song to Vicky to my MP3 playlist. Yay, good for you. Uh, The next one, CM Punk is a joke. Workout Help he wouldn't be WWE champ right now. <laughs> he will cheat and squirm his way out of this match as always. Mm. Okay, the next <laughs> two were in the Zack Ryder reaching one million followers on Twitter. It be <laughs> uh, Zack wants to work. WWE wants to bury him. Don't buy the WWE's fake hype. Ryder was more over than Cena last year. What makes you think they would want the guy on Raw? Did he counter? Did he contradicted himself at the end of that twi- that statement? <laughs> I don't know. And then the last one, I was hopping for John Cena, the Army wrestler. I never had his photograph. <laughs> that was the exact quote from that. And with that, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Bobby, for that. Uh, this centers us. Let us know who's watching this stuff. Who who, who are the people that they're trying to talk to with the stuff, with the humor that we get? And there you go. Spell it out for us. Or misspelled out for us, as it may be. <laughs> and yep. with that, I think we're going to toss it to the Wrestle fan once again for the most esteemed. He has become over the last, uh, I think, this is your third year I think doing this, uh, the mm. the pre, the the holder of the Mayhemies, the organizer of the Mayhemies, uh, uh, Mr. Wrestle fan. You know what? You know what? Mm. I, we got to we got to do this proper. Got to mm. do this right, guys. Mm-hmm. You know what? Mm-hmm. My ass got tied. So we're gonna fucking do this, huh? Okay, okay. Well, we leave this up for, until the main. I, I went themselves. with the. Uh, I mean, I went with the the sweater vest look hmm. for this evening. I'm I'm just pimping uh, some chachi plays over here. Headphones so. are back on. And also a accept- tie. acceptable. I got a Bubba Gump Shrimp Company shirt on. Oh, uh, classy enough. Classy. Enough. Everyone's in there. They're fancy, in fancy clothes. Uh, yeah. Because it is this time of season once again, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the fifth annual Mayhemi Awards. This is the time of year where we announce the nominees for the 2012 Mayhemies uh, for the year of 2012. Uh, and it is going to be an absolutely tight race, I think, for a lot of these. Um, for the, when you do want to vote on these, you can go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. The poll is uh-huh. already up for all of these awards. Uh, check, the, check it out. Go vote for your favorites there. Uh, and let your voice be heard on what you think was the best of 2012. Let's start off the nominees with uh, a big one this year. A very hotly contested one. The moment of the year. 
for 2012. This is the only one I care about. <laughs> not the one you're nominated in? I'm not nominated in this one? No, you are, but you're nominated in another one. Yeah, I know. I've already yeah. won that one. Oh, okay. Wait, so, so this is... Wait, wait. Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Okay, so your nominees for the moment of the year for 2012... Wait, aren't, oh, these, all, are, aren't these all in a video? They are! They are in a fancy li little YouTube playlist that you can check out so you can get a memory of all of these, you know, awesome, awesome memories from 2012. Uh, so the first big one that occurred in uh, 2012 uh, was from WMS 303, which was the return of the esteemed Steam Machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I see uh -huh. what you did there. Oh, man. He came back, mayhem was had, and it was a amazing time. That was our anniversary show, by the way, mm -hmm. and that was a awesome, awesome time. And now the time you've all been waiting for. No one's been waiting the for The reveal us. of our special guest for this week. Steam Machine rejoins us. How's it going, guys? You're also fired. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure absolutely everyone that's <laughs> you're, you're also fired. That, well, I'm not really, you're not paying me. No one's getting paid. No one's well, really getting paid. I think you have to pay me to fire me. No, completely not. Well, well. Also, think about it this way: I am sitting on the couch with you, mm -hmm. and whenever I'm unemployed, I feel the need to touch <laughs> the person closest <laughs> to me as, as much as possible, <laughs> deeply as possible. So, Steve, it's been four years. <laughs> All right, yeah, and then what else is next? Four. There, uh, also a uh, nominee for this award was uh, from WMS 306 when uh, our good friend DJ Lunchbox made a uh, very uh, important call for a job acquisition <laughs> for the Extreme <laughs> oh, yes. Wrestling Federation. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, for those that follow us on the Mayhem Show uh, Facebook page, uh, a little a little treat uh, that was found by me came up recently um, for a, a group that I think I think we want to make new friends of the show, right, Sorg? Right, Sorg? Yeah, yeah. We, well, you know, I was still thinking, in the clock, Wrestle fan. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I, I, I'm thinking, there, there, yeah, this was a pretty good Facebook that you got, you put up. Yeah, there. it. Um, uh, what was uh, the name of the the, the, the page? Good, the good, the you, good folks at Extreme Wrestling Federation, and it's Extreme spelled E X T R E A M. Uh, yeah, I, they, I, it went, it was going around on the web. There was this. Uh, Flyer that came up. Very, when I say very, very, very well done flyer, uh, <laughs> which looks like it may be on college ruled paper, but that's okay. Um, for Extreme <laughs> Wrestling Federation, um, owner Max Slavin and Whitney. Don't forget Whitney. Um, Whitney is uh, such a slut. I'm just gonna read verbatim. It's a <laughs> new wrestling come in to Newport, and the matches, and it's spelled like like a match, like a fire. Like the like match will be, and it's there's something crossed out, some kind of street fights crossed out in blue in blue marker, frist blood, a hardcore fall count yeah, I love anywhere match, blood match, fall count anywhere match, which I I'm I'm so glad they clarified instead of a falls count anywhere. This was way too confusing. Um, EWF championship match. Air. Will, I'm calling for Max Slavin and Whitney. Um, I'm uh, calling in regards to a flyer I saw. Ah, buffering. <laughs> Buffers. Uh, buffering. Uh, for the EWF, the Extreme uh, Wrestling Federation, um, I'm uh, I'm super excited. I, I saw this. Uh, I really want to join your uh, join your group here. Um, I have a lot of wrestling experience, a lot of a lot of title reigns. Um, I've done uh, I've done some very uh, very interesting matches uh, in my life. I uh, I had a long run with a hardcore title. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And I see uh, on your uh, on your match or on your flyer here, you do hardcore matches. Which is a good falls count. Fall, I'm sorry, fall count anywhere. Um, I have a number of falls count anywhere matches. Never done a fall count anywhere match, uh, but I am willing to experiment. Um, <laughs> there you go, Russell fan. What else we got next? Uh, from WMS 312, this year was a big year for pro wrestling because Hulk Hogan released a porn. And it was <laughs> disgusting, and it was pretty gross. 
But it also made us think of what wrestlers we want to see in our pornography. Oh, no. so, oh. you, think he, you think he came in for the save? He's t- <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, seriously. What I want to know, I want to know if he was out. I want to know if he was at at the bedroom door, and he was calling it the gorilla position, and he was waiting. Gorilla press. He was waiting for that that one part in the music that really gets him going before he kicked in the door and just ran around the room. <laughs> Doing the ear thing, and then he hopped up on he hopped up on the bed, ripped off the shirt, and just plowed into the chair. But did he come out Man. to a real American? Yeah, that, 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 that's a big difference because nothing nothing kills the mood like that shitty Hulkamania real a real American song from oh, WCW. <laughs> there you go. You get the idea. Wrestle fan, what's next? Uh, from WMS 323, DJ Lunchbox is a complex man. He loves monkeys, and he also loves monkeys riding dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah! Monkey Rodeo! I uh, tickets to a game, and she overlooked a Monkey Rodeo night! <laughs> what tickets did she get, sir? Calm Are down. For this June 16th? Where's my calendar? They- I don't know. I have to look. Next Saturday? <sighs> I'm having an episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in PG Power game. The, the 16th. The 16th. That's Monkey Rodeo Night, sir. Monkey Rodeo Night. You're going to Monkey Rodeo Night. <laughs> you get a monkey. You get a monkey. <laughs> the guy said that Jesus gave him a monkey. Time out. Time out. I need you to stop celebrating. I okay. need you to get Sarah and tell her this now. Okay. Monkey Rodeo! <laughs> on stream or on phone or whatever. She's not in here, but I'm calling her on the phone and put her on speakerphone. There you go. <laughs> What's next, Russell? Monkey Rodeos. And I think we're going to put these together. I want to put a special release in the stream of like all these clips together. <laughs> so if anybody wants to watch through. For Wrestling Mayhem Show 327. We discovered here on the show that the internet is a magical, magical place where people decide to compile facts and numbers about wrestling because uh, they have no better things to do. 996, they got the episode numbers and everything. And here's uh, the dark matches. Oh, man. Um, all wrestling the match information. Data. We lost like a half hour uh, Information about thing. match times event overall, seven <laughs> matches event known. And with a known match time contained of 32, 46 minutes of in-ring action, since the match time of non-dark matches is not known, this is also combined match time of the whole main show. Wow. Somebody's yeah, doing Somebody it. took some time. But somebody this. has zero so, life uh, and knows nothing of what pussy Some people, like. some people. There's a, I, I found a fact that you won't find on that <laughs> website. Okay. And it's also... The coolest way I've ever seen someone, or I've ever heard of someone vacating a title. <laughs> uh, By accidental grazing. No, I've been, I'm on <laughs> IWC's website, and, okay. they have, and they have a title history. Yeah. On June 6, 2006, Dennis Gregory won the IWC Heavyweight Championship. He was later forced to vacate the title due to use of a sword... In a war games match. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, was that was the show. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. was the yeah. fucking yeah. sword. <laughs> Dude, I gotta send you that DVD. That's why that. From WMS 331. You know Virgil? Fuck Virgil. This week on Remember <laughs> When? Well, it's gonna be some fresh memories. Um, we were at Steel City Con, and we had a Sorgatron Media booth. We were selling uh, IWC, uh, RWA DVDs, of, of course, uh, Pimpin' the Wrestling Mayhem show, everything. Um, and and I thought it would be a great uh, uh, thing to go to because, uh, you know, John Morrison and Melina were announced to be there as, as their celebrity guests. Um, and uh, and I was, you know, I didn't know what kind of placement what, what I would have. And it turns out I was on the row. We were on the row uh, right along. I could see Melina turn left. There's Melina right down the row at the end. Uh, we we're probably like four tables in, something like that. Uh, but right, right, right beside me was Virgil. Give props to Riz for this idea for uh, the pose. Oh, uh, of course, everybody everything. knows the lonely Virgil meme. Uh, LonelyVirgil.tumblr.com. Thank you, uh, Ciro, 
2K in the chat room. Uh, so we made our own lonely Virgil pictures when he left. And one he day. goes on. Um, I think I got pretty oh, heated from and, there uh, too. So and, and he's not the only one. What's next? From WMS 339. That week, AJ was Bo M Diggity. The M stands for moon salts. Like, I think he did like so I think he said sad yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh slow mo I forgot we did the slow mo <laughs> or did you do that no I did that you yeah. did that <laughs> that goes on his highlight reel his personal yeah. highlight reel there <clears throat> what's next from WMS 340 one of the big mentions from this year's or this year's Wrestling Mayhem show was a guy by the name of Brandon Stroud who wrote a little something called Jack Swagger of Marks. DJ Lunchbox decided to recite that in the only way DJ Lunchbox can. Arm away from his eyes, and as his sight adjusted, he found himself far, far away from the smart, sexy, and powerful world of WWE superstars. He was alone. Alone on the USS Radhead Manthus, lost in God knows where. Light switch then lurched forward, sending Swagger stumbling forward into the ship's middle turnbuckle. Jack collapsed onto the ground, waiting for the hyper tube or whatever to tip over and pin him so he could end today's 30 seconds of work. He covered his face. How long could this losing streak last? That's when he noticed something peculiar. The ship wasn't moving. After staring up at the lights for several minutes, Jack sprang to his feet. Frankenstein walked to the nearest shuttle window, expecting to find himself lost in a distant starfield. Oh, the, the engines have stopped. I'm dead, he thought. <laughs> What's next? From WMS 343, we're always looking to expand here on the show with sponsors. Mm -hmm. DJ Lunchbox tries to require one of our own. <laughs> Just don't flight. set us flat spots. It's a flat flight that you fuck! Woo! <laughs> Do you are you sometimes lonely and want to have sex with a woman, but no woman will have sex with you? <laughs> Why not fuck this tube with the rubber <laughs> vagina in it? <laughs> we mold vaginas uh, based off of real live women who also have sex for money. Fleshlights. I'm not sure, but I think some of our models also vibrate. Fleshlight. <laughs> Buy your fleshlight today. Fuck that thing. <laughs> and finally. Finally, from Wrestling Mayhem Show 347. In case you don't know, everyone hates me on this show. On this episode, they finally gave up. I fill them up. Don't Gotta okay. fill oh, so they We're obviously sense. leading to some kind of payoff, right? Yeah, oh, hopefully. Right? With another Punk Ryback match. Yeah! Hell Which, yeah. By the way, Chachi... Fuck Chachi, you, I'm out. No, 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 hold on. Chachi, <laughs> I'm with you this time. Chachi... <laughs> Chachi's Wait, bad. hold on. Chachi, I'm with you this time. I hate this Fuck Ryback you. thing too now. <laughs> I quit. I quit. I quit. If, no, honestly. Going no. Back. Okay, when Ryback... I, I love that I just mentioned the name Ryback and he, and he quit. Um, but, I think, but I think he's keeping at home. You know, I keep track at home. Yeah. This is the thir second time in three years that Chachi has walked out on a show. I think he's quit more times than that. Second time in three years? I'm sure there's more than that. There's yeah, more yeah. than that. There is okay. more? Okay. okay. We got okay. a new, new co-host here. Sit down. Okay, so <laughs> we, we need a new co-host. We need a new co-host here. Hello, Missy. Hey, Missy. Hey, Missy. Hey. Missy. Sorry, didn't tell me. Wasn't going to tell me what you did. Okay. Well, well, tell, we don't, 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 don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, you got to put headphones on so you can hear everybody else. Uh oh. Okay. I'm signing, I'm signing with Chachi here okay. because the first time Ryback got his title shot against CM Punk, yeah, Riz just left too. Riz is gone. Riz um, is gone. Okay. There was, uh, but the first time Ryback got his title shot. You know, there was intrigue. There was, you know, oh, can he really do it? Can, you know, are they going to give him the title? And now it's just become a point when they put Ryback in title matches where we're just going to keep thinking, how are they going to screw us out of this? Everyone's leaving. <laughs> what? 
What is going on? Who picked these Apparently moments? Apparently you're boring people. We all did. Uh, when? Well, what else is new, Missy? Well, that's okay. Chachi's going to walk in and realize that I'm not Chachi at this point. No, so this seriously. is the uh, Russell Fan Mayhem show. It's time to talk more about the independent <laughs> so there wrestling you go. circuit. That's the last moment of the year, right? Hold on. Indeed it is. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. What, what, hold what, on, what, what? what? When were these picked? These were picked uh, mostly in Hangout and uh, amongst... Well, their- that's bullshit. Well, <laughs> because I, like, while I appreciate the funniness of that moment, yes, there there were other moments that were left out. That, well, well, everybody was meant to pick at least one moment, sir. Yeah, I think I we picked, said on the show to email picked, uh, uh, email moments. I picked the Sarah McLaughlin one last week. No, that was, that was last year. year. That, was, that one last year. Yeah, that was year. a year before. Oh, so I won two Mayhemies last year. I guess so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had a big thing about that. Last Never year. mind. So, there you go. Just I apologize, fan. Russell Fan. Good there work. There you go, Russell Fan. <laughs> <laughs> Good go. job, Russell Fan. So, go. yeah, if you like any of those moments, especially a certain amount, go vote for that for Moment of the Year uh, for the Mayhemies. Uh, but there are more awards. Uh, our big thing uh, here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we love when we interview people. We love that. We love talking to other people besides each other. Um, and we had a lot of interviews for uh, the year of 2012, and all of them are nominated for Interview of the Year. So let's run through these bad boys. Holy crap. Uh, from WMS 304, Rick Topping. From WMS 305, Michael Facade. From WMS 307, Brandon Oliver and Alyssa Flash on location. From WMS 309, G Raver on location. From WMS 310, Jimmy DeMarco and Chess Flexor. From WMS 311 through 313, the Death from Above movie interviews featuring Bingo O'Malley, Gerald Rumberg, and Kurt Angle. From WMS 312, Justin Bisnett. From WMS 320, Ryan Edmonds. From WMS 321, Rachel Summerlin. From WMS 322 and 331, Justin Plummer. From WMS 324, Gary J. From WMS 325, Matt Justice. From WMS 328, Logan Shulo. From WMS 329, G. Raver and Scott Sarin on location. From WMS 330, Steve McGranahan from the uh, from the world's strongest redneck. No, he is, he the, world's is the world's strongest redneck. Thank he you He indeed much. is the world's strongest redneck. Uh, from WMS 333, Joe Dombrowski. From WMS 334, Dalton Castle. From WMS 336, Jock Sampson. Mm-hmm. From WMS 339, Matt, Max Seleski of the Wrestling with Subtitles group. And from WMS 349, Logan Shulo and Michael Fassad. So that is a ton, a ton of interviews that we did. Uh, So go listen back to those uh, if you don't remember a lot of them. And go vote for which one you thought was your favorite for the year of 2012. Um, So definitely uh, do that also at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Another award that we do every year that uh, that gets hotly contested always, Mm -hmm. we love our fans. Gets dirty sometimes. It does. We love them in the naughty places sometimes. Sometimes uh, in the naughty places. No, we don't. I'm sorry. I don't usually, know why I said usually that. Usually in the naughty places. I just spilled my coffee. <laughs> I wasn't oh, and his naughty that. place, coincidentally. It should have been. But <laughs> well, we have a bunch of nominees. We had a bunch of great fans this year. So here are your nominees for Fan of the Year for 2012. Nominees are Alexander Cars. Big PPC. I feel like we should make some kind of noises for this. Oh, good. Alexa- okay, let's start again. Alexander Mars. Cars. Hey! Big PPC. Hey! Ooh. Matt Carlin. Yay! Ooh. Zero. Yay! Ooh. John Fun. Yay! Ooh. El Gran Azul. El Yay! <laughs> El Yay. And finally, Texas Anarchy. Ooh. Yeehaw! <laughs> it's Texas. And yeah, it's Texas. Um, so yeah, those are your nominees for Fan of the Year. Go vote. This is the... This, from that mo- that voting on, there's going to be a lot of campaigning. I know that much. So it's going to be a very interesting run. Play dirty. You know, gouge some people's eyes out. I don't care. Um, it's going to be a fun one. So go vote. Uh, on already, Alexander Carr says a vote for him is a vote for justice. Yeah, there we go. Sid Justice. 
Mm. Sid Justice. I want to vote for him. I love Sid Justice. Okay, and you know how I said that, you know, politicking is going to get dirty? It's about to get more dirty because it's time to announce the nominees for our co-host of the year. Who's the only one here tonight? (laughs) <laughs> oh, no. oh no wait 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 hold on wrestle fan before you get started mm-hmm. i have a proposal okay um i've won moment of the year uh i've won host a host of the year i've won uh mayhem legend mm-hmm. um one of the only awards that i have left to win that i can win is co-host of the year. Then you're going to have really. to quit. Because you can't be a host fan. and co-host. Well, what I was going to say is, I will walk away from my host of the year nomination uh. so I can be put in the co-host of the year. You can't drop weight to be in our division. Wait, well, first of all, <laughs> I, 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 I got to say, Chachi, it's pretty tight this year. It's, it, there's yeah, a lot of good stuff nominees for ho- co-host of the year. You don't know who I am. Uh, let, me run, hold on. let me run through them real quick. Our nominees for co-host of the year are Riz, Yay. Bo Diggity, yeah, boo. Yay. Yay, boo. No, boo. no, no one boos Bo Diggity. I don't know. I'm allowed to. He'll, he'll be okay with it. Bobby F. J. Town. Boo. I mean, yay. yay. <laughs> Wheels. Yay. And the newest addition for 2012, Mr. Jim Shireman. Hey. Hey, hey everybody. So, uh, Chachi, you could enter this, you know, but I got to say, that's some stiff competition. If it ends in a tie, can we have a sack race? Well, isn't isn't Bo, Di- Bo Diggity should be in for host of the year? Uh, These are – host of the year is the people that are on every week, every single week someone – He's here point. on the show. Mm. Yeah. We, so, and, and the co-host of the year is a very important award. Mm-hmm. You know, Mike Bo, mm-hmm. Bo Diggity won it last year. You know, you know, this, you know, can he be a two-time winner or is, you know, someone going to come uh, up and steal it? Hey, there's a question. Uh, where is Mad Mike? He's in if, uh, if certain someone would wait. What? I'll, All I'll right, go, go on. Okay. Go on, Russell okay. fan. Because there's a final award. For the 2012 Mayhemies, and that is host of the year. Oh, I, I thought he was reading the thing, and maybe it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, and it's going to get super dirty now because your nominees for host of the year are Sorgatron. Sorry. Chachi. Reactions. I'm trying to get the reaction shots. Oh, okay, I thought no well, nobody, okay. no one's reacting. <laughs> nobody is. <laughs> Papa Lunchbox. <laughs> this is not gonna work on audio. <laughs> <laughs> He'll make his own reactions. The Russell fan. And finally, Mad Mike. We can't get reaction. <laughs> Alright, time out. Dear co host nominees. Now the politicking no. starts. I am looking to win co-host of the year. <laughs> As I am not nominated for co-host of the year, it's a little hard for me to win said award. So here's what I'm I'm uh, here's what I'm offering. You're trying right? to, you're going to inhabit the body of a co-host. No. And drink of their blood. Since Wait, uh, drink of their blood. Since host of the year is pretty <laughs> <laughs> you might a little limp there, sir. As uh, <laughs> as host of the year, or yeah, as as a pretty much locked in host of the year, two time host of the year. Uh, here's what I'm willing to do: win co-host of the year, and I'll trade you awards. <laughs> That's allowed, right? We can just trade awards. Yeah, whatever you want. With yeah, award, I wait. Just- you know, Sweet. Hey, we don't I say they're non-transferable. The whole system that I made. <laughs> I mean, John Cena just handed his off to Ric Flair for no fucking reason. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Wrestle fan didn't put any rules or limitations in. I mean, you could always like win yours and then hand it off to Doc Remedy or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, whatever. I'm not gonna get anything from Doc. Fuck that. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, maybe handy, yeah, but you never know. Um, 
Uh, so yeah, there you go. The Mayhemies <laughs> are unleashed campaign, and, and I don't you uh, you're using a different system this year, uh, Russell fan, that people can't like do a multi vote kind of crap. We are our good friends at Micropoll uh, have an awesome system. Uh, unlike <laughs> unlike past years, you can only vote once, so yeah. make the vote count. It's like There's IP no. address or something like that. So exactly. Okay, so okay. if you vote for a category, you can't vote for it again. The voting will go until Monday the twenty eighth. Uh, at midnight uh, Eastern time, and uh, because the day after that Tuesday will be the official Mayhemi Awards show, and we will announce the winners, and we will get dressed up, and it will be a fun time. Mm-hmm. It's a dressed up time of the year. Woo! Yeah. So excellent. Can I bring, can I bring a date? What? Yeah. Yeah. Can I bring a date? If you want. All right. Well, yeah. Are you the first? Are you can bringing bring, Papa FJ down? I'm gonna bring Melina so she can stun me again. <laughs> <laughs> the whole night just like just sit there in the car what the I'm gonna have oh, lady no. lunchbox standing over me feeding me grapes the whole time <laughs> like macho man the heat is yeah, grapes He's soaked strong. in ether <laughs> 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 oh, awesome, awesome. Well, beyond that, we covered a good bit uh wrestling news. Hey, you know, we really kind of covered everything wrestling news-wise I think I wanted to talk about. Um, other than uh, uh, Trent Beretta was released. Oh. <laughs> uh, he wasn't, oh, was he on the future Endeavor list for anybody? Yeah. Uh, I don't no, think so. I don't think. Nope. No, sirs. You, you have those written down. I don't even remember who I picked. I still have a sword. You picked uh, Ezekiel Jackson. Did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, seemed, that sounds about right, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm going to miss his detective show, Trent Beretta. You had a detective show? Oh, wait, that was Beretta. That was... Hmm. I get it. I understood that reference. I don't understand okay. the reference. Was there anything else? Somebody did. Uh, we, we really did touch on a lot of it, I think, in the fan mail and everything. Was there anything else news for the week that you guys uh, wanted to talk about? I mean, 20, 20th anniversary of Raw. Uh, Randy Orton lost. lost. Randy Orton lost the, the way Yeah, that was it. shocking. That was good. You know that was good. You know what? Um, it, was the, it, was, it was the greatest night of my wrestling life because Randy Orton lost, Eve lost, and she quit. Yep. It was the best. And I just... Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Can I, can I also say that that was a great Divas match last night? It was a good mm-hmm. yeah, It was a good I, Divas match. I want to really point that out. They always do good on their really way out. Good. What's up with that? Wait, Eve quit? Yeah, Eve did a yeah. quick yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, quit, quit? God, they're just yelling yeah, in the chat room. They're literally just yelling at each other. That's what happens, room. Mayhem. It's, it's going to be all caps in the chat room for the next two weeks. And then probably even after that, when people are pissed at who won, or, or, or bragging, or, or whatever, or, or, or wow. <coughs> wow. We'll turn um, this Mayhemi bus around. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Make you play Desert Bus. <laughs> oh, show title. Um, anyways, uh, uh, yeah, beyond that, I mean, it, it was it was an all right Raw. Uh, we had the Rock thing, whatever you think of that. I thought it was Besides, all right. Um, I, I thought it was all right. I thought the, the pull apart stuff at the end was what needed to happen with those guys. I thought that was some good stuff. The cage match I thought was unbelievable. Uh, well, not unbelievable. It was really good. It, it was it was a good match. It was a good. It was a good. Match. It was a good match that really had like no purpose. I, I don't care about the no purpose thing. It was a cage match. There is a freaking cage on my TV. There is a purpose. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I, and I don't. And they're all going to the Royal Rumble, so there's nothing really to build to other than that. So it is matches for the sake of matches. Matches for the sake of ratings. That's that's fine. That's completely a- fine. Wrestle fan. Wrestle fan. Wrestle fan. Hey, wrestle fan. (laughs) Listen to me. Sometimes it's just okay to wrestle. Okay? It's just okay to have wrestling on your television and enjoy it. Just like, I don't give a shit about how the stuff that happens on NXT, but I really enjoyed seeing Sterling James Keating wrestle with Tyler Black. It was just a good time. Okay? Okay, wrestle fan. It's okay. It's okay. Okay? It's, It's all right. I thought you said it was Big E. Well, Big E was on there too. Uh, well, one it was it was the one guy, and then after that it was Big. E. Yeah, NXT. I loved NXT. I watched like two episodes straight, and I couldn't get enough of it. By the way, don't stop till you get enough. 
Um, no, I signed back up to Hulu Plus since they have all the wrestling. I figured, okay, maybe this will just be easier. I can pull up my iPad mm-hmm. on my Xbox, whatever. Um, so that's how I watched SmackDown. That's how I watched um, um, If I Miss Main Event. Uh, I don't know if they have Slam on there, but the NXT stuff's all on there. So I started at the beginning of the year and watched two episodes. Uh, and, and they're bringing the Shield stuff over. Uh, Biggie Langston is kind of a face ish on there, which is kind of weird. And you can kind of tell that they taped the stuff together. So it doesn't really correspond with what's happening uh, right now on the show entirely uh but but still really cool uh, really good matches uh, uh team neon action force had a great match yes. against uh, uh i think it's cassius ono and, and, and some guy that's also from south africa uh that apparently justin gabriel has like a long history with so leo so, kruger yeah kruger exactly exactly uh no relation and it, was, it was it was some really good stuff i, I really enjoyed it it's something different and even in that small ass arena at full sail university it still feels more important than tna right now so uh yeah uh, and, and, uh hey regal on the mic and then jim ross on the mic for the main events i mean you really can't beat that you know i can't get enough of those guys so um especially now that they're they're not on three hours of raw also really cool that they keep bringing back uh uh, Ross on for big events like 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 th- like they did, did uh, last night uh, mm-hmm. for that, that cage match. So I mean, it really kind of makes it feel special. You know what I mean? To have them pop up for that. So so then that also made that cage match for me. By the way, Wrestle fan. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, I Whatever. Throw that in. <laughs> you look like one of those kids in my class when I, when I throw out too old of a reference. Uh anyways which uh, is all the time <laughs> which is apparently all the time i i did tell you guys when i was like hey does anybody remember how dos worked never mind um because <laughs> i we realized the dir- directory structure of html kind of worked like and i just no it wasn't gonna work uh, i was reaching too far um any, any other thoughts on raw last night wasn't special it really didn't feel special no no it was, just, it was like oh it's a 20th anniversary god it's gonna be amazing and then it was a three-hour raw only instead of segments they had clips from previous raws they had a clip show uh, segment the wedding yeah, segment fucking clip shows it was like i'm like no, when did this become how I, the how i met your mother clip show yeah I mean, that's, that's really what it felt like. Although, it, great. Was, it wasn't terrible. It was no. an entertaining Raw, but it really didn't feel special. It did feel too soon uh, after, you know, just having the thousandth Raw. Hell, they were still selling the DVD this week, you know, putting it over on TV. The the 100 moments with the thousandth episode back behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, so uh, they really kind of decided that's going to be the thing that's more important. But it was for like the season premiere kind of situation. And it's and like, I- hey, we've been around 20 years. Yay! And I, and I think also, like, all the special guests they brought in, like, you know, Vince McMahon and Mick Foley and The Rock and stuff like that. It's like, it's, they haven't been gone no, like, no, for no. a long time to where it felt special that they came back. No, there's no big surprises, anything like that. Nobody popped no, there up. was there was one big surprise, and that was that uh, Chris Benoit was in the opening. <laughs> was he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, from from all accounts. They they had that opening that like mashed up all the old openings and fucking Chris Benoit was in it. Kind of couldn't take him out from where he was, right? Because I mean he was a big deal for a while, right? So mm-hmm. so they were going to go back what plurum or something. It'd be too people would notice, especially mm-hmm. the way they did that. So yeah, I, I don't know. It was all right. I thought as far as a raw went, it was fine. Yeah. First hour was entertaining, kind of blot in the middle, and the first, and it ended really strong. You know, I mean, even the Rock stuff. You know, um, another thing on the Rock. It, it, who all watched SmackDown? I did. I did. Now, yeah. what did you think? I'm curious. I want to pull the ones who did watch it. Did you prefer the Rock segment on SmackDown versus what you had last week on Raw? Uh, I thought it was the same. The same, I, I because thought... because it was the Rock being the Rock, mm-hmm. and then instead of having CM Punk like physically shut him down, you had Damian Sandow shutting him down. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you had you um. know, Rock can embarrass them. Da 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 da. Uh, it, that's really, I think I think when you look at the promo last week uh, between Rock and Punk, you see that they're from two different generations, they're two styles, and they don't fit together. Kind of like the old Punk Nash thing back in the day. It was like, wow, Nash really seems old in this uh, mm-hmm. style wise. I think that was more Rock doing what Rock does best, and yeah. it, it was. I, 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 it I won't give him credit for that. It spawned uh, what DJ Lunchbox calls the favorite tweet I've ever tweeted. Yes, yes, <laughs> because 
All you have to do is say, brother, be Hayes, you fucking bitch. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's the best tweet that's ever happened. That's amazing. (laughs) I think think The Rock came off better on SmackDown than he did on that first Monday Night Raw. Because on on Raw, it was The Rock doing his shtick and CM Punk being a real person. On SmackDown, it was The Rock doing his shtick and he had someone who was willing to play with him. Hmm. Yeah. He didn't make. They didn't make him look like a fucking child. No, you no. Know? They it, made. It, they it, made him look like. Oh, he's the Rock, and he's doing his thing, and it's all right to laugh at. It you was know? somebody to be a foil, you know, and and that is what he does mm-hmm. best, and that that it's what he's good at, and that's what he's entertaining with, you know. And and like I said, I did enjoy it. It was it was a uh, it threw back to old Rock, and that's what we want to see, you know, and everything. I don't like this new Rock. I come up with a new catchphrase for my opponent. Da 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 thing, you know. Swinky getting, tits. Swinky tits mm. and 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 Such cookie puss. puss and all this stuff. I think it's kind of i that i don't also, that also, i don't dig i i think that's it was fun the first time but now he keeps trying to go back to the well on that one and also and, like the rock concert last night like i get if people think of rock's funny because he makes jokes like that mm-hmm. i get that mm-hmm. yeah i'm not a huge fan of it but i get it the one I, well, on like vicky guerrero like that wasn't even like jokes you just mean the, lyri- the lyrics yeah. were just like you're fat and you're ugly and you're a cheap prostitute. Yeah, that's not like even like he didn't even like work it into the sense of like a joke. Oh, you know, I it, it, it's fine I, for what it is. It, it's it, fine. It, it's yeah. the rock doing his thing, whatever. You know, it is still better than last time when he screwed up. We will rock you with with titles. Oh um, yeah, side. So. Uh, Riz brings up a good point. Zack Ryder has a million fans. To my point. Fuck you, Zack Ryder. And uh, Chachi <laughs> preemptively walked away before that stat. Thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> he's gone. He just went. Yeah. Went but seriously, there. fuck Zack Ryder. <laughs> All right. On that note, let's let's go ahead and learn what everybody uh, learned from wrestling this week. Uh, Couch, how about you? Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, let's go around. Uh, <laughs> I, I DJ Lunchbox, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that uh, the Miz has a uh, a medical condition hmm. where uh, he. If he doesn't have uh, more seating options than he needs, he goes into convulsions. <laughs> and that's why they had both director's chairs in a ring that was full of couches, multiple couches. It's so weird to see people sit. Yeah. In there. So, yeah. 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 Um, all right, let's go. Wrestle fan, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that WWE uh, put on a pretty awesome Divas match this past week on Raw, even against the one idiotic fan that brought a restroom break sign. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't care how true it is. Fuck that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, from the chat room, uh, Cars learns that uh, I learned that Rock just needs to go away, and he actually included a video uh, that I can't get to at the moment. And Mad Mike learned that I missed some of the old Raw theme songs. I still think the Papa Roach, I want to be loved, is a little weird. Uh, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, what'd you learn? I learned Randy Orton lost. Ah, yeah! Best moment ever. Woo! Also uh, that uh, Ryback has pink eye because Randy Orton shit in the bags in his eyes. That was... Mm. <laughs> 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 wow! Uh, I learned that. Riz learned in the chat. Uh, I learned that. Uh, fuck Zack Ryder. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I learned I have a new diva crush, and that crush is Paige uh, from oh, NXT. Yeah. Oh. Good. Good choice. There you go. There you go. Great Bring wrestler. her up. Bring her up. <laughs> seriously seriously like why we're, we were all worried about all the divas going <laughs> yeah. away and we're down to like aj and caitlin which we had a discussion last night i think wrestle fan mentioned like maybe we'll have a Chickbusters feud and, and finally and everything because there's amazing. nobody left um it, it, can i just mention how awesome caitlin is like just yeah. like yeah all, mm-hmm. not, both the match uh watch like her touts afterwards mm-hmm. and like all the stuff she's been talking like the backstage fallout stuff yeah like, caitlin's caitlin's the best character they have yes because they asked her about what are your thoughts about eve quitting after your match and she she was all you know i went you know i went up with her you know she she's you know one of the reasons i am where i'm at now and she you know the battles i've had with her you know have taught me a lot so i wish her the best look at that and look at the Zach Ryder tweeting bye 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 Hosky. Caitlin's mm. like such like a like she's a like a genuine person and like I think we need more of those people. Like more of those characters. Like Matt Stryker tweeted last night, she's the Lisa Simpson to his Millhouse Van Houten. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. On that note, guys. Uh, what about me? Oh, hey. Oh, yeah. You're back. Hey. Chachi's hey, 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 back. You back. Left. Chachi. Let me, let me fix this camera. Uh, I would just like to say that I'm already leading the uh, host of the year uh, election. Um, Spoilers. I, I, I'm up by at least four votes on all you fuckers. And I got five more coming. So, sucks to be you. Um... Uh, what I learned this week has absolutely nothing to do with wrestling. Uh, I learned that when I'm president of the United States, wrestle fan, when you come to deliver my pizza, you have to deliver it to the Northwest Gate. Okay. Are you taking notes? <laughs> Me? Wrestle fan? No, no. Wrestle fan looked like you were taking notes. No, I'm, make, I'm making sure. I'm making sure. Yeah. Northwest yes. Gate. Remember, Remember that. Or else right. the Secret Service will fucking cap your ass. <laughs> Good to know. On that note, guys, thank you very much. It's been a great mayhem show tonight. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been jumping in our chat room, uh, including uh, Texas Anarchy, Riz, uh, Juggalo John, Mad Mike, uh, Wrestle Revolution. Uh, I'm sure I missed somebody in there. Uh, Re oh, Wheels is in there, too. We'll see you Saturday, buddy, over at rwalive.com to see what's going on with that, new, that show, the fifth anniversary for our RWA. Shit, they've been around for a while. Um, see you guys out there. We're going to try to uh, score an interview and hopefully have that up on here uh, next week if all works out. Uh, and with that, uh, uh, keep keep tuned in. Hey, follow us on Twitter. These guys have been doing an amazing job on Twitter during the shows. I don't even have to say anything. People are all over it uh, uh, during all the wrestling shows, even Saturday morning slam with Bobby. Yeah. Which is now at 10.30 a.m. I can sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I, I got to get up for Justice League Unlimited. I can't get enough of that show. Um, even though I've seen all of them before, right? Uh you're welcome. You're fucking welcome. What, 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 oh, oh, for the thing. Uh, yeah, Riz, uh, WrestleFan. Uh, I don't even know. I just know somebody is tweeting, and I and it's great because I'm seeing guys interacting with new new names on Twitter. Like, it, it, it's just fucking fantastic. Uh, I just saw like a, a, a response from four days ago that happened to pop up in one of my feeds over here of somebody saying like sands through the hourglass. I don't even know what the fuck you guys were talking about. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> Well, you guys are on top of it, so please interact with us there. The Facebook group, everybody's been jumping on there for the most part. If you want to get a hold of us, it works for you. We're on the Facebook uh, uh, page. Uh, we also have a page on uh, Google Plus and a community over there. Hasn't really been running uh, much just yet, uh, but if you want to jump in there and get something started, uh, I, I do get those messages and everything. A lot of us are in there, uh, so we can uh, try to get something going there as well. So um, with that, hey, go check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Flip TV, Roku, YouTube. You can drop us a line at guitar.com at WMS0, buy the app, the iOS app store, and the Amazon app store for Android. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. It's the Mayhemies. Get your get out the vote. We'll see you guys next week right here. <laughs> Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. wait. wait.